Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. This month I'm talking about child ballads, which are ballads collected by folklorist Francis James Child during the 19th century. And today I'm talking specifically about ballads that deal with ghosts. Ghosts feature prominently in a variety of ballads, but these are just six specific ones that I've picked out to highlight today. The first one on my list is child ballad number 10, the Twa Sisters. Twa meaning two. It's a story about two sisters who are both courted by the same guy, and uh, one of them is very jealous of the other because she believes, accurately it's implied, that he loves her more. And so the jealous sister pushes the other one into a body of water and she drowns. Now, in some versions, there's a thing where her hair or her bones get made into an instrument, and I'm actually going to talk about that in a different video. But the one that I wanted to talk about in this video is the version where the dead woman's spirit talks to the person who finds her body and tells what happened. If only that happened in real life, right? I mean, it would make murder investigations a whole lot easier. It's a very interesting concept, I think, the idea that this woman's spirit is lingering after her death and is determined to make sure that people know what happened. This one is a little bit different than most on my list in the sense that most of them are not about someone who was murdered, or at least if that's the case, it's not specified. In a lot of cases, they're about someone who is appearing to their surviving partner. Like, they were in a relationship, they were planning on getting married, whatever, and one of them dies and then appears to the other one as a ghost. In this one, she's not appearing to the guy who was part of the love triangle with her and her sister. She's appearing to someone who found the body in order to make sure that they know what her sister did. There's also a love triangle in ballad number 74, Fair Margaret and Sweet William, although it's a very different love triangle. In this one, William is in love with Margaret, but because of financial reasons, he marries someone else instead. Margaret is distraught by this, and she dies. And her ghost appears to him on his wedding night and stands over his bed and tells him what happened to her and that she's died out of love for him. And he wakes up having had terrible dreams and goes to her house and finds out that it's true and she did indeed pass away. And then he dies as well. The two of them are buried in separate parts of the graveyard, but plants from on top of their graves grow together and form a true lover's knot. That's actually a pretty common motif in ballads as well, and I'm actually going to have another video later on in the month talking about that. Ballad number 77 is called Sweet William's Ghost. Now, this is not the same Sweet William from ballad number 74, or at least one would assume not. There were so many Fair Margarets and Sweet Williams in ballads, it's like, weren't there any other names available back then? Like, pretty much every girl is called Margaret, and pretty much every guy is called William or Thomas. Not that there aren't exceptions but those names are just super, super common. Anyway, in the story of Sweet William's Ghost, William had promised to marry a woman named Margaret, but he died before their wedding. And so his spirit appears to her, asking her to release him from his promise and let him rest. She initially refuses to do so, but is eventually persuaded to. And one thing that I think is really interesting is he appears as if he is totally there and alive and everything, but he clearly understands that he's a ghost. And the way that he reveals that to her is she asks him for a kiss, and he tells her that if they did kiss, she wouldn't live for very long after that. So the idea of the spirits of the dead not being able to touch or kiss the living is, like, a thing in some of these ballads, and this won't be the only one that we talk about that has that going on. Number 78, The Unquiet Grave, is actually very similar. In this ballad, someone is weeping over the grave of their dead lover. And the dead lover is, like okay, maybe this has gone on a little bit too long. It's been more than a year now. Aren't you gonna, you know, move on and let me rest? And it's suggested that the surviving partner being still in mourning after more than a year is preventing the dead one from having any kind of peace in their afterlife. This one also uses the same idea of the ghost who's talking to the living partner can't touch them or kiss them because they would die if that happened. Number 265 is called The Knight's Ghost, and in this one, a woman is waiting for her husband, who's a knight, to come home from war. But then when the ship arrives, he's not on it, and they tell her that he was killed in battle. She's furious, and so she gets them all drunk and locks them in a cellar and throws away the key. And she has a dream that night in which the ghost of her husband comes and tells her to let them out and to not hold what happened to him against them because they did nothing wrong. So in that one, it's not the ghost asking to be left to rest in peace. 
It's the ghost haunting the woman that he was married to because he is horrified by her actions. And then number 272, The Suffolk Miracle, is about a young woman who is in love with a guy, but her father says, absolutely not. And so she is sent away to keep them apart, but then a while later he shows up and seems to have gotten her father's blessing. They ride off together, and over the course of their journey, she ties a handkerchief around his head. However, when they get to her father's house, he disappears and she's left alone. And when she asks her father, he says that her lover has been dead for a month already. She digs up his grave and finds her handkerchief wrapped around his head. Yikes. One thing that I think is really interesting about ghosts in ballads is that they're often not distinguishable from real people until something really creepy happens. A lot of these women mistake the ghost that they encounter for their lover still alive. And it's not until either the ghost refuses to kiss them or the ghost disappears and they're informed that their lover is dead, that they realize there's something going on. Obviously, there are exceptions to that. Fair Margaret and Sweet William and the Knight's Ghost both clearly are ghosts from the beginning, from the, from the first moment that they appear. The last one that I talked about, The Suffolk Miracle, actually reminds me a huge amount of stories about hitchhiking ghosts. Have you ever heard the story where someone is driving along the road and they pick up a hitchhiker and the hitchhiker gives them instructions on where they want to go? And then they arrive and the hitchhiker gets out, but they leave something in the back seat. So the driver tries to return it to the hitchhiker, only to find that they were never there. And someone will recognize whatever item was left in the car and say, oh, that belongs to so-and-so who died a few years ago. A lot of the time specifically died in the place where they picked up the hitchhiker. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it and you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays.